We're just a week away from the Fed's next meeting, but J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon is downplaying the importance of the Fed's next move. Here's what he had to say earlier today at the Future Investment Initiative in Riyadh. I'm cautious. I don't think it makes a piece of difference whether rates go up 25 basis points or more. Like zero, none, nada. I want to point out that central banks 18 months ago were 100% dead wrong. Okay, so maybe there's should be humility about uh, financial forecasting. I, I would be quite cautious about what might happen next so. year. Meanwhile, how about the economic data? Flash services PMI improved to a three-month high today. Manufacturers saw the fastest climb in new orders in over a year. The Richmond Fed's business index slumped, but its manufacturing gauge was just the second positive reading since the spring of 2022. So while Diamond says the next move doesn't matter, what should the Fed be doing here with monetary policy, and especially with bank stocks back in the red today? Here to discuss is Randy Quarles, former Fed vice chair for supervision, joining us from the Money 2020 conference in Las Vegas. Welcome to you. Thank Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. I think in the past, I've, if I'm not mistaken, you've erred a little bit on the side of caution, meaning the Fed should keep hiking to make sure inflation doesn't, you know, get worse. But what are you thinking today? Well, at the outset of this whole episode, there were two big uncertainties. There was reason to think that interest rates wouldn't have to rise as high as traditional practice would have said in the past to constrain an inflation like this. And there was reason to think that the length of time between a monetary policy action and an actual result in, in uh, constraining the economy uh, would be shorter. Uh, so you get to a point like today, and the question is, uh, given that there was significant uncertainty about both of those suppositions at the beginning, is it because interest rates haven't gone high enough, or is it because we just haven't waited long enough uh, and it's going to take longer than we thought at the outset? I, at this point, err on the side of thinking that interest rates are probably high enough, uh, but that it's just going to take longer, probably a lot longer than many had thought at the outset of this uh, tightening cycle. Uh, in order to ultimately bring inflation in and constrain the economy to reduce upward inflationary pressure. What, what do you think is going on with the banks right now? They are trading very poorly. Well, there's concern in an environment where interest rates are going to be higher for longer that their liquidity needs uh, could be much more significant than they have been for a long time. Uh, and how do you respond to those liquidity needs? The Fed and the other bank regulators are gearing up to uh, require the banks to address that through more capital and more internal liquidity, holding more liquid assets inside of each bank. Myself, I think that's the wrong response, uh, and that the only way that you can address liquidity needs of the sort that we've seen that would be driven by interest rates at this level uh, uh, will be for the Fed to provide additional liquidity, which is really its core mandate and from which it had stepped back over the course of the last decade. It needs to re-energize that part of its mandate. How does the Fed provide more liquidity while it's doing quantitative tightening? Well, uh, I think that uh, uh, there are certain liquidity tools that will be much more consequential uh, than uh, quantitative tightening, uh, to use that term. Um, uh, so you can push on the gas and the brake pedal at the same time, provided you, you don't push on them equally. So when there's a liquidity need in the banking sector, I do think that that's something that the Fed can respond to by lending to the banking sector, while at the same time, for monetary policy purposes, following the, the path that it's on.